In demo three, we're going to look at some basic editing skills and also taking a look at some of the preferences you can set, like in the spelling, grammar, and autocorrect area of the document. So some of the basic skills, I'm going to be using this particular document several times over the course of the next two or three demos. And some of the basic skills that you can set up uh, that you need to learn for editing is simple deleting and replacing text, um, how to cut, copy, paste, what the undo button is all about, what the redo button is all about. So let's say that I want to take this first section about this Chetwood Bridge. Remember the show and hide allow us to look at the non-printing characters. So let's get rid of this tab that I had set. So I put my cursor in front of the T and then just hit the backspace. It's gone. Same thing with the Chetwood. Can I move it by just hitting backspace? Yes, I can. And notice that now the indent has been eliminated for that particular one. So when you go to change something, for example, down here, the weight limit is eight tons. If I wanted to make that just the number eight, all I do is select the eight, type an eight, and it replaces it. So you can easily replace text by selecting it and then just typing what you want to type. So deleting, replacing text, copying and pasting. For example, let's say I want to take this Deadwood Bridge one right here, and I want to move it to the bottom of my document. So I highlight everything. So I select everything. And there's several ways you can actually select. Notice this black arrow. If I click and drag down, it selects the paragraph or the lines of the paragraph one, one at a time. Very similar to using, again, your shift key and your down arrow. Now when I go to cut something, if we go up here to the edit menu, cutting is a Apple key X, copying is an Apple key C, and pasting is the Apple key V. Uh, obviously that's not available to me because it's ghosted and I have nothing, there's nothing in the memory to paste. So I'm going to use an X since I want to take this in a sense move it down to the bottom. So I want to cut it from where it is and move it down to the bottom. Another way of doing that is you can use these icons up here on the top layer. Cut, copy, and paste. So I can use a little scissor icon and cut and it's gone. It's now sitting in ether space up there in the memory. I'm going to have to move down using my slide on the far right. Find a spot down here and now I can paste. Notice my paste icon is now available to me. So I paste it and I have now transferred it. When you paste it you'll often get this little uh, paste options. It'll keep source, match destination, keep text only. So since this is all in the same source, we might as well just keep it as, as it is and just keep the source. Because I can always change the look of it uh, later on. So I go move back up and notice I have an extra paragraph. Again, it's just a matter of putting your cursor, uh, applying that, that indicator and hitting the backspace to eliminate a space. To create spaces, return. To eliminate spaces, delete. Very, very simple to and fro. Now, let's say after the fact, I didn't really mean to do that. So I have up here an undo button that allows me to undo. And actually, I can see several things that it allowed, it's allowing me to do that I can go back and change. So notice, um, if I go all the way back here to cut, it's going to eliminate what I just typed, what I just pasted, what I just cut, and move it back to where it was. So that's the undo button. 
The redo button right there allows me to redo those actions. And so you have your undo and you have your redo command. Now, as we can see, let's turn off our show high button. As we can see, there's we've got a bunch of red squiggly lines and there's even some green ones hiding in our document that we're going to take a look at right now. And so to do that, we're going to look at the spelling and grammar tool. And you'll find that under tools. And it's the very first one, spelling and grammar to that. And what we get is a grammar dialog box. Now, if you only want a specific area that you want to check, then select that area first before you sit down and start looking at the spelling and grammar. So that's an option that, that you can have. So we have um, some a lot of names in here. So we can just go down and say ignore. Instead of ignoring once, we can say ignore all. So every time this name appears, just ignore it. So we're going to say ignore all. Willamette, and I'll say again, ignore all. Now this is a grammar one. The last of Lincoln County's covered bridges to be restored. And then instead of a comma, it says it should be a semicolon. Let's change that one. Since I'm not very good at grammar, I'll believe what it's telling me. And the Foster Bridge, or Fisher Bridge, do we want that to be capitalized or not? Probably wouldn't hurt. So we'll change that one as well. And we'll, again, um, ignore all. So you might have, take you a little while to go through all of these. Once you're done then, the grammar and spell checking has been completed once you've gone through all that it has found. Now another thing that can be done, particularly if you're in a situation where you're typing in a, a historical name or a name of a particular person, let's say you were doing it on Russian poets and the name was Solzhenitsyn. One of the things you can do is have the computer Word automatically change for you anytime you type a particular thing, change it to what you want it to be. And that can be done under autocorrect, where you say, okay, if I type an XXX, I want you to replace it with Thomas Jefferson. For example, so I'm going to add that, and now anytime I type XXX, it's automatically going to replace it with Thomas Jefferson. You know, I can't spell Solzhenitsyn. Sorry, and so we're going to hit OK. So I'm going to just show you how that works. I go up here, I type XXX spacebar Thomas Jefferson. So if I was doing a paper on Thomas Jefferson and I used his name a lot, it makes it a lot easier just to go in and, and set that up so you can uh, easily create those scenarios. I'll select that and delete it. Let's go back to autocorrect once again. And so if you look at, at autocorrect, notice right here it says automatically correct spelling and formatting as you type. So if it recognizes some things, it can automatically do it for you. You don't have to have that turned on. So you, you can do a, a situation where that doesn't have to be turned on. But I'm going to leave it on there to show you a few more things. If I do a show all here, notice it shows all of the things that I can set up as preferences. I can see my spelling and grammar. There it is. And what are my printing preferences? What's my file location? Where do I want to save uh, my work as I, as I save it? So you've got, got all of these tools or things that you can do, and they're called preferences. And you can go into each one and set them up. So are you familiar with texting? Well, then how about a colon 
dash parentheses. Well, happy face, isn't that special? Okay. Dash dash greater than sign. Ah, what do you know? We got an arrow. So there's a lot of those that will automatically come. Sometimes you have to be careful. If you want them, you may have to put spaces in there so it doesn't recognize it. But the best thing is it'll automatically correct when you do something in spelling that we often make mistakes in. You know, for example, I before E when it's supposed to be. Okay, so receive. Notice it corrected receive for me. Did that little blue underline thing that let me know that it made a correction. So it has it has words built in automatically that will automatically correct as you go through your document. Using my arrow key to move around instead of my mouse. Highlight or just keep hitting that delete key to get rid of things. Okay, that'll end this demo.